Hey, welcome back to part four of this very special series, all about helping you to improve your English for work fast. And in the previous videos, parts、uh, one, two, and three, we worked on one specific business English situation. Very useful for so many different situations that it you need to know how to do this, and that is introducing yourself. Or doing a short elevator pitch. Now, in those previous videos, we created your pitch from start to finish, and today you'll learn one important tip to really double the chances of hearing a yes after your pitch in English. Let's go. Hi, I'm your English coach, Christina, and welcome to Business English with Christina, where we solve your business English problems fast. This is the final video in this series, but I'm following this series with a very special free、uh, interactive workshop on what you need to do after you pitch your ideas. And you can get your invitation to that workshop by signing up for my newsletter.、Um, the link is down below. And then that workshop is going to happen on November 18th. And like I said, it's free and it's going to be very, very, very valuable for. Your English, your work, your job, and all of that fun stuff. So, in the last videos, you learned how to use your elevator pitch to show very quickly your competence, your strengths, your skills, the value you bring, and you also learned how to ask specifically for something that you would like to get from the other person. So now you're ready for this final. Part of the series, you know. Let's imagine you're at、um, any kind of business situation where you have introduced yourself, you've made your pitch, you have asked for something specific. You, I mean, you probably then continued the conversation with your with your business contact,、uh, talking about business and maybe things not related to business because we also do that as well. But anyway. The conversation is coming to a close, and you know maybe the other person, you know, doesn't remember everything that you told them at the beginning in your pitch, and maybe they don't remember that thing that you asked for. So when you close the conversation, you just want to bring that back and remind them, maybe offer to follow up or to contact them or something. That really like anchors the action that should happen after your conversation, and this is going to double your chance of success after that conversation ends. So, at the end of that conversation, you might just say something like this: "It was nice talking to you, and I'll send you a quick follow-up email later today about a contact at Amazing Core." Now, maybe you were talking to this person about how your business. Could help theirs. In that case, you could end the conversation like this. It was nice talking to you. I'd love to send you some details about how we could help your company. Or if you shared a great idea about how you could help the company where you already work, then say something like this: Could we meet in the next few weeks to discuss how this new project could work for our company and maybe set up a timeline for our work? But you see, the idea is that you close the conversation by setting up an expectation of something that's going to happen after the conversation, basically to to move forward on the things that you discussed together. Okay, and now we're here, like, to the exciting part because you've been through this entire series on how to improve your English fast by identifying one specific thing, breaking it down into All of the little parts that you need to improve on individually, and then putting it all together so that you have something very simple, but that can have a big impact on your work, on your confidence, on your English, on all of that. And as you saw, we did it just one step at a time, and that's what makes it feel. You know, makes it feel possible, makes it feel easy. So, what does that entire pitch sound like, like from start to finish? Let's wrap it up with a full example. 
Hi, I'm Christina Robofe. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I'm a marketing consultant at PR Associates, which specializes in helping businesses with their public relations. We just finished helping eCore create a community outreach program and a PR campaign to promote it. And now you ask for what you want. I'm really inspired with the work Amazing Core does, and my team and I would love to help you create the kind of public relations campaign that will allow your business to grow. And then, of course, you'll go away and you'll talk about lots and lots of things. Um, and then at the end of the conversation, it was nice talking to you, and I'd love to send you some more details about how we can help your company. And there you have it. That is your entire pitch from start to finish, plus a little call to action to conclude the conversation and double your chances of moving forward after making that pitch. And if you go over to um, my blog, you can go back and review the other parts of this series. With all those resources, you'll have everything you need to create your perfect pitch so you can feel confident and you can use it again and again in so many different situations. And now that that conversation is over, you're going to have to follow up with the person, and generally that's by email. So now that you know how to pitch yourself, go ahead and join me for my free interactive workshop on November 18th, which is going to be all about emails in English and how to write the perfect follow-up email, but also several other very common types of emails that you write in English for your business. And we're going to do something really exciting um, that I've never done before, um, but I'm, I've seen it done and I love the idea. And it's basically taking actual emails um, from real clients, uh, keeping them anonymous, of course, um, but going through the email with you to analyze and correct it so that you can see um, something typical from, let's say, a learner of English, a business person learning English, um, a, the emails they typically write. I will go through those emails, correct them, analyze them, correct them, and show you how to improve it so that you can improve your own emails. It's going to be really exciting. It's on November 18th. Um, but you do need to sign up for my newsletter so that you get your invitation to that free workshop. And of course, the link to sign up is down below in uh, the description of this video. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me for the entire four parts of this series. And I'm very, very, very excited to see you in that interactive workshop on November 18th. All right. See you there. Bye.